So a couple of weeks ago on the program, we talked about an article that was published by the Washington Post, and the author was Dana Milbank, and he posits that Bernie Sanders is the Trump of the left. And ever since this article was published, we've seen cable news try to reinforce this narrative. We've seen politicians and establishment politicians, more specifically, try to reinforce this narrative. And now, right on cue, presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg, who attended what to do about Bernie meeting secretly with Democratic Party leadership, such as Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Neera Tanden even. He is now reinforcing this narrative as well. But rather than saying that Bernie Sanders himself is like Donald Trump, is the Trump of the left, he's saying that Bernie Sanders supporters are similar to Donald Trump supporters with respect to their anti-establishment predisposition. So this is what he had to say specifically. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you why I take issue with his framing of people who are anti-establishment. Seeing that the numbers are fine, like unemployment's low, like all that, like the set GDP is growing. And yet a lot of neighborhoods and families are living like, like this recovery never even happened. They're stuck. It just kind of turns you against the system in general. And then you're more likely to want to vote to blow up the system, which could lead you to somebody like Bernie and it could lead you to somebody like Trump. And that's how we got where we got. The reason why I take issue with what he said there and really his framing more specifically is because there's this underlying implication that being anti-establishment is inherently bad. There's that negative connotation associated with being anti-establishment. And he says, you know, people who are anti-establishment because it let them down. This is why we're in the situation. Because people are anti-establishment, because they opt for Bernie, because they opt for Trump, this is why we're in the situation. So on one hand, there's the correct assumption that the establishment is pissing off a lot of people. But on the other hand, there's this also this the secondary implication that, well, this is why we're in this bad situation, this objectively bad situation. It's because there's this anti-establishment fervor. So you kind of tacitly give the establishment a pass rather than explaining how bad it's been and why people are anti-establishment. But just to draw this equivalence between Trump and Sanders supporters, even to suggest that they're on opposite sides of two extremes is harmful because what Trump supporters have is a fundamental misunderstanding as to why the system is not working. Whereas Bernie supporters, we're not anti-establishment because we believe that the political establishment is inherently bad. We're anti-establishment because we have a nuanced opinion, because the establishment is not working for normal Americans. And the reason why we're anti-establishment is because we view the establishment as impediments to justice, equality environmental justice. So because the establishment is no longer working, because it is now static, we are saying the establishment needs to do better, whereas Donald Trump supporters, they don't get that. There's no complexity with their political ideology. Trump just says, look, it's immigrants, it's Muslims, and they accept what he says. Whereas with us, there's no cult of personality driving our support for Bernie Sanders. So that's why to even put Bernie supporters and Trump supporters in the same category, even if it's correct that they're both anti-establishment, what you're doing is a disservice. You are glossing over really important details that differentiates Trump supporters from Bernie supporters. And really, if you want to compare anyone to Donald Trump, any politician to Donald Trump, ideologically speaking, Pete Buttigieg is closer ideologically to Donald Trump because Donald Trump is on the far right. Pete Buttigieg is more of a centrist and Bernie Sanders is a center left politician. So if anyone should be compared to Donald Trump, it should be the centrists, the Pete Buttigieg's, the Beto O'Rourke's of the world, because they're the ones who are closer to Donald Trump. But yet, People like Neera Tandon promote this idea that horseshoe theory is a thing where you have two equally opposite far right and far left sides that move so far to the left and the far right moves so far to the right that they almost converge in a way. But that's not true. What I think is a more accurate representation of what's happening is fishhook theory. But understand what's happening here. And even if Pete Buttigieg is able to, I think, easily explain away this comparison here, what they've been trying to do when I say they, meaning cable news pundits and establishment politicians, they're trying to cultivate a narrative. Be very aware of the fact that they have been 
deliberately trying to prime you to believe that Bernie Sanders is like Donald Trump. So can I just play who he's starting to sound a lot like, right? I pay what I owe. By the way, Donald Trump says that and is completely unashamed. I pay what I owe, and why would I pay a dollar more? Okay. That's right. Every um, American should here, do that. Here, um, here are Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump talking about their books. I don't apologize for writing a book that was number three on the New York Times bestseller, translated into five or six languages. Uh, I wrote The Art of the Deal, which is, in all fairness, I think the number one selling business book of all time. <laughs> Sorry. It's I mean, great. it is it's funny. Great. It is funny. Well, look. Why are these guys so alike? So they're trying to cultivate this narrative, and that's on purpose. It's no coincidence that all of a sudden everyone in the mainstream media, everyone in the political elite class is trying to compare Donald Trump to Bernie Sanders, it's because they want people to believe, even if it is subtle, that, well, you know, we have this instability because of Donald Trump, so if you elect the left equivalent of Trump, then obviously that's going to make for more political instability, and it's unacceptable, and that's specifically why people have been calling Pete Buttigieg out here. So, for example, Ro Khanna says, come on, Pete Buttigieg, it is intellectually dishonest to compare Bernie to Trump. Bernie is for giving people healthcare, education, childcare, and more pay. He wants to blow up credentialed elitism, those who reject tuition-free college for all. And, of course, Pete Buttigieg does reject that. Nina Turner says, Bernie Sanders supporters are not the same as Trump fans. Senator Bernie Sanders supporters are Democratic and independent voters, many of whom are people of color. And she goes on to cite articles that explain just how diverse and dynamic Bernie Sanders' base is. So I think that those tweets do a phenomenal job explaining why we are pushing back so forcefully against this narrative because what Pete Buttigieg is doing by comparing Bernie supporters to Trump supporters is he is adding to this media narrative that they're all collectively trying to cultivate that Bernie is the Trump of the left. It started with Dana Milbank and they all started parroting the same thing and now here Pete Buttigieg is doing the same thing. Now, he's trying to take shots at Bernie Sanders because when you are behind if you can attack and target the front runner, it makes you more viable. It boosts your name recognition. Now, P Pete Buttigieg, Poot Buttigieg, <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, he doesn't have to do that because the media loves him. They are eating out of the palms of his hands, but he chose to do this. And it's because, again, he was part of that small coalition of elite Democratic Party insiders who got together, had dinner, and discussed what to do about Bernie. Now, he did release a response, and this is what he had to say. My point is that people have been motivated to want to blow up the establishment, and Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump represent radically different ways of doing that. But I think part of how each of them was able to get some appeal was by speaking to the frustration that so many Americans have with anything perceived as the establishment, anything seen as being committed to the political and economic systems that have been prevailing really for my entire life. So even though they led different voters in very different directions, I do think it is meaningful that anti-establishment candidates, the more dramatically anti-establishment, the better be it from the left or the right, have been able to get so much support in recent years. Two things that I noticed here. First of all, he's kind of walking back his comments, but second of all, the reason why he's talking about the establishment and the perceived skepticism of any one or anything, any entity associated with the establishment is because it's let people down. Now, why would he touch on this? Why would he even bring this up? Well, it's because it's very clear that he is an establishment candidate. News media loves him. The Democratic Party leadership clearly loves him since they met with him to talk about what to do about Bernie Sanders. So he is part of the establishment. So I think that he's probably personally angered at the fact that people are skeptical of anyone who's perceived to be anywhere near the establishment. And since he is part of the establishment and certainly perceived to be that way, I think correctly so, and this is just speculation, I can't get inside his head, but because he's perceived to be establishment, now he wants to try to speak to the frustration and kind of communicate to voters, hey, look, I get it, I understand. The establishment isn't working. Now, the question is, is this a strategy that can help boost Pete Buttigieg's anti-establishment street cred? 
Possibly. I mean, I think that it's important, just generally speaking, that you acknowledge that there is widespread frustration with the establishment. But the problem is he will have this perception issue going forward since he already met with Democratic Party leadership and essentially conspired to figure out what to do about Bernie Sanders. And that's going to be a problem. So maybe it's the case that he wasn't intending to take shots at Bernie Sanders and he just worded what he was saying in a really poor way. But the problem is, once you start drawing comparisons between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump and their supporters, you start making it seem as if you're jumping on the bandwagon on a particular narrative that the media is currently trying to shove down our throats, that Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are similar in a multitude of ways. And the problem is, if you do that, then people who you may need in the event you become the Democratic Party's nominee will feel disenchanted with you because they think that you're just like Donald Trump supporters. So all that I'm saying here is if you want to be perceived as being anti-establishment, at least to a a larger degree than he has been, then actually be anti-establishment, take more populist positions, and stop conspiring behind closed doors against Bernie Sanders. Period. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.